Tech Summer Preview. So my name is Joanne Stock. I'm a professor of geology and geophysics here. So I work in the Seismo Lab in geological and planetary sciences. I do a lot of work on um, earthquakes and re other related things in earth science. And I do like Spanish language news interviews for <laughs> when there's earthquakes and they need someone who speaks Spanish. Um, I've worked here 21 years. And before I came here, I was a professor at Harvard. And before that, I was a grad student at MIT. When I was in high school, I was looking around. I was, I was very interested in finding a career that was sort of stable. And I thought engineering would be a good thing to go into <laughs> because you could get hired by a company and get a job, you know, and not have to, uh, you know, at that time, there were a lot of jobs for engineers. I think that's still true. So my naive assumption not really knowing anyone who was an engineer was that, well, this, you know, I should go to engineering school because I liked math and science. I also liked art. I was actually an art major in high school. Like, I did a lot of artwork, but I looked at my friends who had applied to art school and, like, nobody could get jobs. And so I was like, well, I can always do art on the side if I want, you know, or I can get an engineering job where I have to draw things a lot. So, <laughs> so now I'm a geologist and we draw things a lot with the computer, but we get to color things in and, you know, there's still that aspect of the work. But once I got to college and I was taking classes, um, I kind of made my way from thinking I would major in physics to planetary science to geology. And in the course of that, I had classes from a professor at MIT whose name was Tanya Atwater, who was really a fabulous role model because she seemed to be a very nice person and able to do really good research and not, um, you know, and able to have a kid and sort of handle everything as well as being really like a good scientist and being a nice person, which I thought was really important because, you know, I found it sort of a turn off to have people who were, uh, you know, disagreeable. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, she then went on to be a professor at University of California, Santa Barbara, and uh, she's now retired. But she's, I think, been an inspiration to many of the people of my generation because she was such a successful scientist and she's really uh, genuinely like passionate about her science and so she now spends a lot of time teaching teachers and preparing. She does these great animations of earth science topics for you know educators to use and you can go online and watch them and they're really fun. So I think you know if I have to pick one person, I would choose her. Although. I think I also had good role models um, from my, like my older sister, who was a year older than me, but she was also, you know, interested in computers and science and engineering. So my sister did a bachelor's degree in computer science, and this, um, and then she got a job right away working for a company called Teradyne, and mm -hmm. she's still working for them, and this is already like 30 years ago. So. Um, she's had a steady career in computer technology, like ever since her bachelor's degree, which I think is also amazing because, you know, I think it wasn't that common back then for people to do that. I kind of moved towards doing a lot of field work because that was the part that I found the most fun the yeah. whole time. So even in college, when we got to do, you know, field geology or field geophysics, I thought, well, this is really fun. I get to be outdoors. I get to make measurements. Um, there were sort of two aspects of it that I really like. One is that you don't have a nine to five job where you're sitting in an office. <laughs> but the other aspect that I, I was really surprised by when I was an undergrad is that you could start doing research even at, you know, sophomore year, and they could give you a project to do where nobody actually had figured out the answer yet. And so you could make some contribution to the body of knowledge of science, even though you didn't feel like you really knew very much, you know, like you didn't have to study for like eight or 10 years after, you know, high school to, to join some huge lab group and like make a contribution. You could actually do something fundamental as an undergrad. And, and that I really liked. I think that's still true in a lot of these STEM fields that um, there's just so much to discover and there's many ways to help humanity by doing it. So what I've seen coming out of students who've done SERFs with me is that they have managed to do um, things that people haven't done before sometimes and often that's a stepping stone to like going to grad school and continuing to work on something like yeah. that and sometimes it was more that um, they saw what options were available to them in research, you know, so they could come with me like on a research cruise and go and realize that, you know, they could go out on a ship and collect data and then, you know, they could do it again if they wanted. And sometimes I ended up sending undergrads like by themselves with, you know, other research groups to collect the data we wanted. Um, and so they gained a great degree of independence, I think, in terms of understanding sort of how we collect data when we're doing research.
So actually, my first piece of advice is for everybody, whether they're <laughs> male or female, which is that I think they should follow their passions and really go into the field that they think is going to be the most fun for them. Like, I think it doesn't work out for you if you are doing it because your parents want you to do it and you're <laughs> not sure you really want to do it. Like, I think for anybody, it's really important to do what you find the most fascinating and interesting, given, of course, the, you know, parameters of like, well, I need a job that pays, you know, that I can afford to live. We do have students who come in to, uh, you know, they, they come in not for the right reasons, and then they're not really happy. You know, so it's like they have to enjoy what they're doing, they have to want to do what they're doing. And this is true whether you're female or male. And then for the women, I think the most important thing probably is to recognize that you're perfectly capable to do whatever it is you set out to do, that not, you know, don't listen to people if they're saying, oh, you can't do this, you know. <laughs> but it is also very important, what helped me a lot was actually having a supportive parent, or partner, I mean, a supportive um, husband in my case, because eventually, you know, we have two kids and like, you know, I still wanted to go do field work. And so my husband luckily was like completely supportive of my career. And I know that doesn't always happen. So I think it does take a community uh, to raise kids and the more supportive people you have in your family, whether it's your parents or your spouse or your uh, you know, sisters and brothers or whoever, and that is a big uh, thing that really, turns out to be really important and can be a deal breaker for people who, you know, their spouse like doesn't want them to work or doesn't want them to like take the job they want or things like that. So they have to sort of work all that out. And people do find their own way and, and they, you know, I guess the other thing to tell people is that if they didn't start out in STEM, but they decide they want to go into it later, it's certainly possible. And so, you know, I've known people who were you know, American studies majors, and then they went to Outward Bound, and they're like, oh, I really want to be a geologist, I want to have an outdoor job, and so they went back and, you know, studied a master's degree and got a PhD and became geologists. And I've known people who were history majors who decided, you know, they got a job at a medical clinic, and they decided they wanted to be an EMT, and then they decided they wanted to be a doctor, and so they ended up c catching up on classes, going to med school, and becoming a doctor. And all of that is possible, but Certainly, if you know that you want to be in STEM, it saves you trouble if you can start off in it. It works both ways. We have people who come in to STEM and then decide they want to do something else, and that's fine too, you know. But just to keep, your, keep in touch with yourself the whole time so you know, like, what you want to do. What I always have to say with the TV interviews is, we can't predict earthquakes, so be safe. <laughs> be prepared. <laughs> but you I never to, know. I don't think you really need that in this interview, but... <laughs> There might be an earthquake. It's like the standard thing, you know, <laughs> duck cover and hold on. <laughs>